Good morning, Greenbrier Road Baptist Church. We're so thankful you're here and we're blessed to have the opportunity to have our church service virtually. Before we get into the worship service, there's a few announcements that I'd like to make known to you guys. On Sundays and Wednesdays, our classes will still be meeting as normal via Zoom, so be prepared and flexible for that. On Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m., there will be a staff-led devotional on Facebook Live, so that's another resource for you guys uh, and our staff to be connected. Before we get into worship, I want to lead us in with a word of prayer, so if you'll join me. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the blessings that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for uh, the resources that we have so we can still be connected and, and still be digging into your word with fellow believers, Lord. And that even in the midst of something that seems so detrimental um, to society and, and even our personal lives, Lord, that you haven't left us, you haven't forsaken us, Lord. And if anything, you've prepared us. I pray that you prepare our hearts, Lord, as we go into the service, Lord, and that you, that you speak to us. And you don't let us use a screen or anything to hold us back, Lord. Well, I love you. Thank you. And I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. about a story in Mark chapter 12 and verse 41 where we see that Jesus 
was standing on the opposite side. As they were bringing their tithes and offerings in, Jesus was watching them. He seen their hearts. He knew the motive that they were using when that they had when they brought their offerings. The Bible even tells in this story there was a widow woman who brought two copper coins that placed it in the offering. She gave everything she had. Her heart was pure in her giving and she trusted God with everything and she gave to him. Today, offering looks very different this morning. Uh, we have no men standing up here ready to pass out the offering plates. I don't hear the music playing, but we have an opportunity to give back to God. He knows our hearts. He knows our motives. So today, as we worship, let's worship in our giving and being good stewards of God's Word. Let's pray. Our dear Father, I just come to you, Lord, and I thank you for this day. I thank you for this time that we can worship you and giving back to you. Father, we just lay everything in your hands. Lord, I pray that when you look at our hearts, that we will be giving with a pure heart today. In Jesus' name, amen.
I just want to start the services today by saying thank you. Last week was amazing. You know, all over the world we are going through this virus and it has changed the way that we are doing things. And as Sunday rolls around, it's the first time that I can ever remember that the church doors are shut. But you was amazing. You tuned in. You listened to the sermons as we were uh, Sunday morning as we started seeing the numbers come in of the people that was getting to hear the message. It was amazing. So I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart from tuning in and for worshiping in your home and, and making things uh, really come alive. And it has excited our, our staff. Um, and I just want to say thank you so much. Today, as we get started, I am very excited about today's message. I think I'm excited about it because I live this out as I go to foreign countries or as I share with, with people of different beliefs. We get asked this question all the time. And today's message, we want to talk about who is Jesus and why is he so special? I travel to Tanzania and I work with unreached people groups. In unreached people groups, uh, we are dealing with the Muslim belief, the Islam belief. I work in, in uh, two different unreached people groups, one being close to 750,000 and the other one being close to 1.5 million people, which is the largest unreached people group in Tanzania. I work with these people and I get this question all the time. I can believe that Jesus was a prophet. And I believe that Jesus was a very good teacher. And I believe that he done a lot of great things and that he was a good man. But there's just certain things that I cannot believe. This last, this a couple of months ago, I was able to travel to Tanzania. Well, it ain't even been a couple of months, three weeks ago. I was in Tanzania. And as I was in Tanzania, I came to this village and the very first, first person who greeted me, who wanted to talk to me and invited me into his room where they teach the young children the Islam belief was an imam. And we call it sitting down and having discussions about the holy book. So we sit down for these discussions and we both agreed on the creation. We agreed how sin came into the world. And there was a lot of things that we agreed on. But the Imam himself asked me, will you explain John chapter 1 verse 1 today i want to say that there is a lot of christians who do not understand exactly who jesus is when we look at this sometimes we don't when we are challenged to share who he is we don't know what to say we we just come and say well he was born of a virgin birth he was sent by god here so that that we could have eternal life. And Jesus done a great, a lot of miracles and different things, but we don't back it in scripture telling who Jesus is. Over the next few weeks, all over the United States and then all over the world, pre people will be preaching on the death, the burial, and the resurrection. And they will be speaking about Jesus and they will be telling these, these what Jesus has done for them and about him going on the cross and being beaten. But a lot of people do not understand who Jesus really is and how he really demonstrated his love for you and me. Today, I hope that through this message, I have been praying all morning and it has just been bubbling up inside of me last night. Henry came to spend the night with me, him and Avery. And I was uh, preaching my sermon basically to Kim. And as I was teaching my sermon, Henry said, Papa, are you going to do that again? 
<laughs> you know, it is just bubbling up. You want to talk about the things that God has given you. And this morning, I am very excited to teach you, to be able to teach God's word of who God or who Jesus is. And why is Jesus so special? Why is Jesus so special? Let's go. Let's turn in our Bibles to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. John chapter 1, 1 through 3. Here's what it says. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being. That has come into being. And in verse 14, a key verse here, it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory, glory at of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace. Let's pray. Our dear Father, I just pray today as I teach of who you are. Lord, I just pray that today that your word will come alive and people will see you in a different way. But the, Lord, I pray for those who are struggling today that your word will bring life. Lord, that they will see that this is the way to you, Lord. Father, thank you for all that you are doing. And Jesus, I just ask right now, as we teach your word, Father, may people see you for who you are. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. As I was just sharing, all over the world, we will be preaching in the next two weeks about the dead, the burial, and the resurrection. And what that really means to us. But today, before we get started, I mean, today, I want to share with you exactly who Jesus is. Today, what we are talking about is the incarnation of Jesus. Incarnation means when our Lord became flesh and dwelt with us. It's God that came in flesh in a person as Jesus Christ. It is a mystery. We don't know how it happened, but it is the very foundation of our Christianity. It's what we base everything on. It's what Christianity hinges on. Is when the Lord became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the primary difference between Christianity and every other religion. It is different from any other religion that you see. And most of the time, it is the most debated topic that you will ever come to. Here in the United States and as you travel around the world, people will ask you, who is Jesus? And what do you mean that God came in flesh and he is Jesus? What does that mean? Why take so much time talking about why God came in flesh and dwelt among us? Why talk about that? Because your attitude about incarnation has everything to do with your salvation. If a person does not believe that Jesus Christ wasn't God in the flesh, I have a hard time saying that he is saved. I believe he isn't saved. In John, in 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, here's what the Word of God says. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. See, we see that it's very clear that, that God came in the flesh to dwell among me and you. 
And so I think that it is very important today that we realize who Jesus really is. We see the first of all in the in John chapter 1 verse 1a he says in the beginning was the word. I love the fact that John when he in writing this this scripture he goes all the way back to the very beginning of time in the beginning. In the beginning. Here's what it says in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 he says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void and the darkness was, was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. In the beginning was the word. I want you to think about that. It is a, a, an infinite, infinite. This is what that means. It means without limits, unbounded. God had no restrictions. There was no restrictions of space or ability or power. It was an infinite God. See, Jesus existed in the very beginning. Before anything ever happened, Jesus was in existence. He was God. In the beginning was the Word. Was the Word. He is eternal. He is eternal God. John MacArthur states it like this. Jesus Christ was already in existence when the heavens and the earth were created. Thus, he is not a created being, but existed from all eternity. The word did not then begin to be, but at that point at which all else began to be, he already was in the beginning. Place it where you may in the work. Place it where you may. The word already exists. In other words, the word is before time eternal. See, God is eternal. Jesus is eternal God. He is eternal God. He, he was already in existence when the world was created. There was no trees. There was no, there was no surface. It was a void. But Jesus was there. Jesus was there when creation was created. In Colossians 1, 17, here's what he says. He is before all things. In him, all things hold together. Jesus has always been and always be, will be. There is never a time that Jesus is not. Eternity extends back and it extends forward. Eternity never ends. It's forever and ever. There is no end. But not only is Jesus eternal. If Jesus has been here, the entire eternity has always been Jesus. But Jesus is also eternal God. He's also eternal God. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. This is the scripture that the imam brought up to me. Is this very thing. In the beginning was the Word. Who is this Word? And the Word was with God. How can the Word be with God? And the Word was God. See, in most religions, people look, as I said in the very beginning, Jesus wasn't just a good teacher. Jesus wasn't just a good prophet. He wasn't just a good person. It is Jesus is God. This is a game changer. You know what I mean by a game changer. I want you to think about this. This verse is a game changer in what we believe. Let me give you a game changer so that we understand what I'm talking about. You remember just, a, uh, I don't know how long it's been going. My wife has just started um, not too long ago. But when Walmart did the Walmart pickup, you know, you can go on the computer, you can sit in the chair, watch TV, we can talk together and we can decide exactly what we want to buy and Kim goes and shops and puts it in her cart and then she will go and she will check out, she will pay. And then we even send the time, what time we want to arrive there and when we pull up, we tell them that we have 
parked in a certain parking spot and they will come rolling the groceries out and they come and they they put it in your car the very first time that I went I felt guilty what I did is I opened the door and I was going to help the lady put the groceries in the car and Kim kept telling me Keith get back in the car you're not supposed to be out of the car Keith get in the car and then I wanted to give the woman a tip because that's what we do is tip people when they help us and Kim said no Keith it's a game changer this woman did everything for us. She shopped for us. She got our groceries. She brought them out. She put them in our car. And all me and Kim had to do was take them home. It's a game changer. Well, this verse in Christianity, it is a game changer. It is a game changer. It changes everything about what we think. The scripture is a game changer. You have an eternal God and you have an eternal Jesus. God and Jesus is equal. John 14, 9 puts it this way. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And you can say, Show us the Father. John 5, 18 says, For this reason, therefore, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him. Why were they wanting to kill him? Because he not only was breaking the Sabbath, but also was calling God his own father, making him equal with God. See, most people will accept that Jesus was here. Most people will accept that Jesus came and he walked this earth. But most people will not see him as Jesus and God being an equal together. The Word says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We serve God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the three in one. I know, as you're sitting there thinking, as we was raised and as we went to school, we learned that one plus one plus one equals three. We were taught that. We know that one plus one plus one is three. When I say we serve God the Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, you see three different identification identities. But when we say but with God, one plus one plus one equals one. Man, some of you just fell back in your seat as we're sitting and talking about this. How can it be one plus one plus one equals one? This topic is the most debated topic about God. People can, can believe that Jesus is his son. But when they say Jesus is God, there is no way. There's no way I can believe that. Everything hinges on this reality. Everything hinges on this reality. I think that if people could see that God came and dwelt upon man and the form of Jesus, becoming man and being Jesus, I believe that if people could take this and to be able to see it, that it would change the way that we see Jesus. And they would have to deal with it that Jesus went to the cross. It would be more of importance to them if they realized that God, our Father, is Jesus. And He came to dwell among us. It would change everything. Listen to the Scriptures again. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This changes everything about it. Even Jesus himself took time to tell us that the claim is to be true. That it is true that they are one. In John 10, chapter 30, the word of God says, I and the, and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. There's a book that C.S. Lewis wrote. And he said in this book, and I may not have the quote exactly right, I'm just going to share the way that I remember it. But C.S. Lewis said that people will accept the things of Jesus. They will accept some things of the Bible and the Word of God.
They will accept that God, that Jesus was a loving man. They will accept that he done miracles in the world. They will accept that he loved everyone. That he loved his neighbors. They believe that you should love your neighbors as yourself. These concepts, they really believe. These things they see and they believe. But when it comes to the point of you saying that God and Jesus are equal. When you say that Jesus died on the cross and that he rose again on the third day. When you start talking about sin and the, how God demonstrated his love for us so that we could come back into this relationship with him. They cannot see that. They say, no, that is not true. I just can't believe that. I watched the imam as we were sharing with him. And he said, no, there is no way that this could be true. Well, C.S. Lewis said in his book that you have to make a choice. There's three choices that you can make. The first choice is that if you don't believe from the front to the back, everything that is written in the word of God, then Jesus is a liar. God is a liar. That he is not, you can't believe him. He's not true. The second thing he says, the second choice that you have, is some people look at him and they say, well, he's just a lunatic. He's crazy. How can I believe that? And you can kind of understand this when you think about what if today there was a man who came and he walked down the aisle to me and, and when I was standing up front and he said, hey, Keith, today I'm going to die. This evening I'm going to die and in three days I'm going to rise again. What would you think? Would you have believed him? You know, sometimes people look and they think, this is just crazy. The third choice that we have is to believe that the word of God is true. And that we see that the word of God in this truth, that we can follow the word of God. And he gives us, he gives us the way that we can have a relationship with him and have eternal life. It guides, it leads our life. It shows us direction. And every word in this word, in the Bible is true. Truth. See, we stand in one of those three places of what we really believe. Colossians 1 16, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17 says it like this For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him. For him, he is before all things and in all things and holds all things together. Our God was there. Jesus was there in creation with God. And he holds all things together. He holds all things that, together. He was created both heaven and earth, the visible and the invisible. Thrones, dominion, rulers, authorities, all things have been created through him. You remember the verse that we read at the very beginning. It's all about God and what it did through him. This is a disconnect from what we see in the world today. These next few weeks, we will see all kinds of things on TV. We will see this man that will be walking the streets and they will show shows on TV and pastors will be preaching the word of God and they make Jesus look like this guy who is just so passive and, and shows this love. He will have this long hair and this nice beard that's really all groomed perfect and he looks like some movie star walking through the streets. We portray Jesus as this man that's just a pushover. But we're talking about Jesus. The Jesus I serve is not weak. He is not weak. He's not passive. He is a ruler who holds all things together. He's controlling everything in this world. It sits in his palm of his hands. He was the creator. He was with us in the beginning. Before time, he was there. He's eternal God. He has always been there. Some people are thinking today 
as we go through these crises of times, people are thinking, well, if God is so big and he's doing all these things, then how does God have time for me? How does God really have time to meet my needs and care about my needs? I'm telling you today, I want you to hear me clearly today. I am telling you that Jesus of the universe knows everything that's going on in your life today. He knows everything and he is in control. The breath you just took in was ordained by Jesus Christ. He is our author, our maker, our savior, our anchor, our refuge. He knows every hair on your head. The very words that we are thinking right at this moment, He knows. Every pain that we have, He knows. He knows the stress. He knows everything that controls us. He knows. He knows everything about us. In, verse, in John chapter 14, I mean John chapter 1 verse 14, we see that Jesus is the eternal God who created all things and entered the world that he created. He entered the world that he created. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we saw his glory, glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, I love this. I love this. Listen. The invisible became visible. The eternal became time. Did you hear me? The eternal became time. The creator entered into the creation. God became man and continued to be still God. 100% God and 100% man. A lot of people say, I just don't understand. So I'm out. I give it all up. There's no way that God can be in heaven and be 100% God and be 100% man. In chapter, in verse 14, it says, And the Word became flesh and it dwelt among us. And we saw His glory, the glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. I am so glad today. I am so glad today that I can't put my God in a box. I want you to think about this. Most religions put their God in a box and they say, well, we see that God did this and God did that. And this is how this happened. And this is what this happened. And what they want to do is they want to put it in a box and they want to put it in a package. And they want to seal it up and have God just completely in the box. Well, praise God today. I'm going to tell you, I don't understand everything about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I don't know everything of how they become one. But that is where my faith comes in. Is understanding and being able to follow and believe with all my heart that Jesus came. It was God who came and dwelt among men. And He showed me the way. He set the example for me. And He showed me the way that I could have eternal life. This is the God I serve. You can't put him in the box. Praise God that my God blows the box completely away. And there is no box for God. Because God is everything. He's in control of all things. And by the way, let me just say this. I don't know personally if my God was in this box that I could seal up and I knew everything about God. And there was nothing new that I was learning about God. And I didn't have to have any faith in what God is doing. All I had to do was follow these directions and do these things. And I would have eternal life at the end. I don't know if I could even worship Him. If He would be worthy to worship. See, today, it takes faith. It takes faith. It takes following Jesus and trusting Jesus. Believing I praise God. I praise God that my God can't be put in a box. That His greatness is way more than anything that I can understand. But I praise Him because He's my Lord and Savior. And I know that one day I will spend eternity with Him. John was in the inner circle with Jesus. John was a fisherman, an un uneducated, and he wrote the book of John somewhere around 50 AD. John said, we saw his glory. We saw 
his glory. What did John mean by this? He saw his glory. Here's what he means. He saw Jesus heal people. He walked with Jesus. He seen Jesus. He saw Jesus when he went to the cross and he died on the cross. He saw Jesus when he rose from the dead and that he was walking among men. He was with Jesus and he saw Jesus do these things and now he is witnessing. I saw these things. I saw his glory. Today, let me tell you, we see his glory. We have seen his glory. Oh, Keith, what are you talking about? What are we talking about, Keith? They, John saw him because he was walking with him. We see his glory because he dwells right inside of me and you. We have seen Jesus heal the sick. We have seen Jesus change lives. We have seen those people who's in addiction, that God has delivered them from the drugs and the alcohol and the things that they have pornography and those type of things. He has taken them away from them and now they are followers of Jesus. We have seen His glory. If He is your Lord and Savior today, you have seen His glory. Why is Jesus so special? As I tie this up and as we finish it, why is Jesus so, so special? The answer is the incarnation. It's when our Lord Jesus, when our Lord became flesh, and dwelt among us. It's when God came in flesh in a person as Jesus Christ and he dwelt among us. We see through the scriptures that I've shared today that it is clear. You can see it clearly. It can be seen by you that God came and dwelt among us. Why did he do this? Because of grace and truth is the reason God came to be flesh and God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ is because of grace and truth. It was an undeserving gift. It was an undeserving gift when God left heaven to make a way for me and you to have eternal life. And it is true. The Bible says in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one will come to the Father but through me. He is the truth about God. You want to know the truth about God? Look to Jesus. John 14 says, 14.10 says, You do not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. The word that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his work. He is the truth. And we can believe and we can trust in the truth by being obedient and trusting God to become, to become like Jesus. Today, I hope that you see through this message that God demonstrated we use the scripture in Romans 5, 8 so much. But today, I hope that you're able to see that God demonstrated his love towards us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died. God desired that relationship that he created in the garden when he was with Adam and Eve. That relationship where they were one. And God left heaven to come to this earth so that me and you would have a way. Jesus said, I am the way. He is the truth. And he is the light. And no one will come to the Father except through him. Today, I want to give you a story as we end. There was a man who was in the service who was called to go to combat. And he had a wife and a young child that was three years old. And the dad went away. And as weeks went by, and as months went by, the child's memory of the father grew dimmer and dimmer. So the mom had seen this and recognized this. And so she took his picture and she had it blown up and bigger. And in the living room, she set this picture on a table where every time her son came across that picture, he would see his dad. And she would remind him and tell, her story, tell him stories about 
his daddy. But as the months went to be a year, and years turned into more months, the kid missed his father. And one day the mom was sitting there and she was telling stories about his father. And by this time, his memory had really, because he was so young, his memories, the things that he remembered about his dad was very dim. And he told his mom, he said, Mom, I wish that dad could come home. The story goes that, that at the door there was a knock. And they run, and we all know the picture. We have seen it on TV a thousand times. The soldier comes in. He opens his arms, and his dad, and the son comes running to the dad. And he embraces him, and now he's back in the father's arms and feeling the love of his father. I want you to think about our relationship with God. You know, this reminds me of when God was speaking to the prophets. And he was telling the prophets. There was a picture drawn of who God was and this Messiah that was coming. This picture was drawn and the prophets told of him coming more and more. But he kept growing dimmer and dimmer in our minds. But then one day... God stepped out of heaven and he came to earth as man, as Jesus. And he walked this earth and he gave us a way to come back in to that loving relationship with him. Today, you may look and you may think that God is too big. He don't have time for your problems. I want you to know that God cares about every need that you have. God is in control of all things. Jesus is Lord. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, He says you will be saved. Today, God stepped out of heaven and came to this earth in the form of a man, of a man named Jesus that went and died, that we will celebrate in a couple of weeks. Maybe today you've seen Jesus in a whole different way and you do not have that relationship with Him. And maybe today you want to make Jesus Lord of your life. Right where you're sitting, right this moment, here's how you can do that. You can go before Him and just admit to Him, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I know that I need a Savior. Thank You for dying on the cross for my sins. And for rising again in three days. I want to make you Lord of my life. I want to serve you. Thank you Jesus. Ask him to come into your heart. And to forgive you of your sins. And put your faith and trust in Jesus. Today you may be looking at it for a church. Maybe you've been out of church for a long time. Today I'm telling you. When we are able to come back and open these doors. You are welcome. We want to invite you to come and to be a part. But today and for the next two weeks, we will be looking at what Jesus did for me and you. Today, if you don't know him as Lord and Savior, ask him to come into your life and make him Lord of your life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures he makes me lie down He restores my soul And leads me all for his name For his great name Surely goodness Surely mercy Right beside
Surely mercy right beside me all my days and I will dwell in your house forever and bless your holy name oh I will bless your holy name oh I will We are so grateful that you tuned in with us today. We are praying that we had people who made decisions today. And so we wanted to take this time. If you have questions about asking Jesus to come into your heart, or maybe today in your home, you have prayed and received Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We want to celebrate that with you. Please contact the church and let us know or email us and let us know the decisions that you have made. Also, you may be looking for a church and for the last two weeks, you have been coming to Greenbrier to worship with us and you have enjoyed the services. We would love to give you more information about our church. You can go to grbc.org to our website and find out more information about our church and you will find all the staff emails and information there. Please email us. Thank you for worshiping with us today.